I'm doing a road trip to Victoria, all alone. We've travelled almost 50,000 kilometres around Australia in the last two and a half years. Nigel does about 99% of the driving. And if I'm in the van solo, I usually don't travel very far. But Nigel's away flying helicopters in Saudi Arabia for the next few weeks, so I decided to take this journey myself. I'm kind of excited and nervous. This is my first big drive somewhere totally new, and I'm going to film it. looks like it's going to be a beautiful day today it's really sunny outside I'm just going to have some breakfast and then I'm going to go out for a walk to explore there's supposed to be some great silo art here in this town of Coonalpin this is where I'm staying at the moment in the Coonalpin sports ground caravan park it's actually quite nice here um, I'm a little bit confused though there is meant to be a free camping area which I think is over there, but there's all these signs saying no camping. So I've just jumped in the middle of the main section. Um, and the way that you pay for these sites with power is just like a tap and go, which is pretty convenient. So it's $15 a night if you want to have power. There's toilets here and showers, and there's also a dump point here. So it's pretty much everything you need. There's a nice fire pit there, and I noticed well, the smoke coming off it now. Someone was hanging around by the fire there yesterday. The internet's really good here. It's a perfect spot to stop and work. Bins and recycling. It's very windy today. But um, other than that, it's quite a nice day. So I'm going to go check out this town. This silo art's quite different in that it's just really black and white. It's really pretty though. And like a lot of them, you kind of need to walk around the silo to really get the full effect of it quite beautiful and the other thing just like wait for the road train just like everywhere in South Australia there's a really cute little church so I was just reading on the pole here that this silo art was painted by Guido van Helton and he also painted the mural on the dam wall um, I can't remember the name of it. And this silo depicts local school children. Um, the artist Guido van Helton is known for his photorealistic paintings, which you can really see in this mural as well. So I'm actually walking along the main highway between Adelaide and Melbourne here. So there's constantly trucks roaring past. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I've read so much about this waffle place. Sadly, it's not open. Today's a Wednesday. I don't know that I'm gonna wait all the way to Friday just for a waffle. But yeah, so these are from Belgium, proper Belgian waffles in the middle of nowhere, South Australia. There's also this really nice mural here outside the public toilets, which has a lot of the local wildlife. I did see an echidna yesterday. Sadly, it was dead on the side of the road. And some of the birds, I'm not sure what that one is, but there's the, like the blue willy wagtails just up here. So I took a team of 27 volunteers who were local mosaic enthusiasts. Took them over 3,000 hours, spending 12 months to create this piece. And each little piece was precision cut by hand. But wait, there's more. Apparently there's a whole bunch of art down in this tunnel here where this couple are going. That's beautiful. This is the Coonalpin pub. Not very outback pub type looking is it? Probably just as well I'm not drinking this month. Looks like that's a big nut for the Coonalpin diner. It's pretty much brought me to the end of town, so I'm gonna walk back. Not a lot here, friends.
Well, after coming back from the walk around town today, I really liked it. It was a really nice little cute little town, Coonalpin. Um, I just did some work this afternoon and now I'm cooking some dinner. Tonight I'm just having a very simple stir fry, loads of veggies, a bit of leftover rice that I had from last night. It's actually quite difficult just cooking for one person, you know, like I tend to always have heaps of leftovers and I get bored with the food. Does anyone else find that if you're on your own? Good morning friends, uh, another day. It's a beautiful sunny day. I'm actually going to head off this morning. Um, before I do, I've just spent a little bit of time setting up some cameras in the front of the van because obviously when Nigel and I are together, it's easy for me to just point the camera out the front and show you guys what's happening, but I can't really do that on my own while I'm driving. So I've set up here a little um, cradle where I'm going to put, I've got an old iPhone, I'm going to pop that in there. I'm just charging it up now to get some road footage and I've also set the GoPro up here so I can chat to you guys um, if I feel like it as we're driving along. Um, I may change those around. I'm just, it's just a bit of an experiment today to see what works best. Let me know what you guys think. First things first this morning, I'm going to take a shower and wash my hair here. They have showers that you can do the tap and pay for five dollars. I hope they're nice and hot. Although the sun is shining, it is quite chilly this morning. The showers in here are nice and clean and nice and warm, but I've got to say, five dollars for five minutes. Five minutes is not really long enough to have a full shower and wash your hair. I was very rushed in there. It wasn't relaxing at all, but I am grateful that I didn't have to do the whole rigmarole that takes an hour with putting water in, emptying water out of the van when I want to wash my hair in that shower. So time is money, right? Right. Well, I'm all packed up in here. Everything's put away. Well, it's not, Nigel likes to say hatches, harnesses, fruit basket. Everything's ready to go. Let's hit the road. driving through a whole lot of farmland this morning. It's not a particularly nice day, it's a lot of grey sky. I just want to eat up some miles. So that was border town. Best thing about this town was that there is a supermarket here. So I just stocked up on a couple of things that I need. Um, interesting fact about this town. I don't know if any of you guys know who was the famous person that was born here. Pop it in the comments if you know. Former Prime Minister Bob Hawke is from here, from border town. There you go. Fun fact. Other than that, it's a completely dead little town, really. <laughs> But it was good to get to the supermarket. Next stop will be the actual Victorian border. Just like that, I'm in Victoria. The second to last state on this lap of Australia and my home state. So this is where I grew up. I'm super excited to be here. And wouldn't you know it, grey skies. So this is Caniva, the land of windmills. Looks like there's some silo art too. Might have to go check it out. Welcome to Victoria where I swear it's 10 degrees colder um, and it's raining. So I've just stopped to look at this silo art. This one's really beautiful. It's with a wedge-tailed eagle. And I've also been noticing throughout the town these little sheep with art on them and they've all got QR codes. So I guess there must be a website about the painted sheep. I've 
I'm here in the town of Dimboola. I feel like today I drove for about three hours. I was on the road for about four and a half. That's about my limit when I'm behind the wheel. Um, I'm feeling a little bit brain dead. So while Nigel can just sit there and drive and drive and drive all day, I really can't. So I spent last night in this lovely free camp here in Dimboola. It's in the sports ground so there's footy fields over there and there's this lovely open area here where you can camp you have to be fully self-contained though there's no facilities here no toilet or anything like that and there is a 24-hour limit but yeah i had a beautiful peaceful night here um I, it like it is quite shady i mean it's gray skies today but i think you would be able to get some sun if you wanted to go into some of these more open areas there behind me. But I was nice and sheltered here under the pine trees. Uh, got a bit of work done this morning, done a workout. So I'm going to head off now to the next town, which is Ararat. It's about two hours drive from here. land today and there's so much of the golden wattle out in bloom which is Australia's national flower but it always makes me think of Victoria because this is probably where you'd see it the most. The road's really rough I'm not sure if you can hear the band bumping along. It's a nice drive to the camp here. I'm at Ararat. Uh, the campsite here is on the shores of a lake. It's a free camp and it's like massive. So um, apparently there's even toilets and showers. I'll investigate that tomorrow and report back. It's pretty cold. I've just been doing some work since I got here. Uh, it's just about to go dark. Tomorrow I'll show you all around. But right now I'm just going to pop up all of the window covers. So we've got these new window covers from Living in a Bubble. Uh, the people who also did these fly screens and they're absolutely fantastic so they are insulated and magnetic so they stick onto the uh, around the windows they keep the van so much warmer they also have these covers for the max fans up here these are amazing it's incredible how much heat you lose out of there so if you're doing van life somewhere cold or even somewhere warm because they're actually good for reflecting the heat back out as well they keep the van warm in winter and cool in summer um, if you're interested in grabbing some of these i'll pop a link in the description down below and if you use our code you'll get a little discount gosh it's really red isn't it <laughs> the lights aren't great but here you go um these are all up now and I've got safe in my own little bubble. I'm about to put the diesel heater on and really warm the place up. I'm staying at the moment at the Green Lake Free Camp here at Ararat. Just going out for a walk this afternoon. I think I'm about to come to a dead end. It's really interesting. I was just looking at the map on satellite view on Google. There's hardly any water. So those photos must have been taken in a time of drought, but water levels are definitely very high. This is a fantastic free camp. There's quite a lot of people here, but there's so much room. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. I've come to the end of the road here. I'm kind of surrounded by this lake. So I'll turn around and go back and you might be able to see up through there where the campers are. Um, I'm a bit further over here in the bush. I then found this little bridge that goes over to an island in the middle of the lake. Got a bit caught in the rain. Fortunately, there's a little barbecue shed there. So I went and stood in there for a while, but yeah, there was just a bit of a downpour just then. You can see there's a lot of water around. 
I want to finish my walk, so I'll keep going. Oh, slippery though. Hope I don't land on my ass. Yeah, good old Victoria. It'll be blue skies in a minute, probably. It started raining again. And this ground is so slippery. this video join me next time when I show you what solo van life is like as I spend a few days at this beautiful campsite and I'll answer your questions like do I get scared do I cook or eat out and do I miss Nigel well in answer to that one at the end of next week he will be home thanks for watching and see you next time